Okay, welcome back to the channel. Um, the F-14A from the Iranian Air Force is upon us and with it there are many more new players um, who enter top tier this way. The problem is that many of these new people, so you probably, don't really know how to use the radar in the modern jets. So probably you have entered the US tree and maybe you have unlocked the first P-51 or whatever, or kind of you are right here in the tech tree, right? And you participated in the event to get the free F-14A and jump to top tier straight away. Or, well, almost top tier, right? 12.3. But you have never dealt with radars. Um, you have never dealt with missile gameplay or anything like that. It's the jet you have come to know through popular movies of any kind, um, but you don't actually know how to use it. If that is the case, this is the right video for you. We will go through the... By the way, I haven't spaded it yet, but I have the normal F-14. Um, I think I could also use the normal F-14 as a demonstrator, because the radar is the same, right? Um, it uses slightly different weaponry, but all in all it's the same thing. But since we will only go over the radar modes and what they're actually doing, and I hope to do this in a rather quick video, um, this is enough as a demonstrator. So let's jump to a test flight and I will explain what the radar is actually doing and why and when to use it, etc, etc, etc. Okay, we are in the air. And I just started from the carrier in the test flight. And on the right, you can see your radar screen. Um, I've set it to rectangle. I think the standard default behavior in War Thunder is like the old World War II style radial view. Um, but I much prefer the rectangular view because everything is laid out better. Now, you can switch between the radar modes with a, with a key that you can determine in the options the shut up the default view is pd hdn and i quickly show you all the modes that are available so pd hdn is standard that stands for put stoppler head on next is tws head on don't worry i will explain everything later the next one is src pdv head on and normal default standard SRC mode. So, and it cycles back to SRC PD HDN. Now, if we have spotted a similarity between almost all of these modes, it is the HDN ending. That means, head on, all of these radar modes do not work, or almost don't work in a pursuit situation. So if an enemy is flying away from you. I think, for example, this one is. Then you can see it's not picking it up. Right? There's nothing on radar. Now, if I switch to SRC, then you can see it is there. It just popped up as a blip there on the screen. Could you see that? There's a slightly in-ground clutter, but there he is again. Switching back to HDN, and he's gone. Now that means that the F-14, this version as well as the Tech Tree versions, are very good at picking up targets that are coming towards you. But it is very, very, very bad in every pursuit situation. So as you can see, this guy is now flying away from us, right? Eventually, when you catch them up, even the HDN mode, when you are close enough to an enemy, will be able to pick them up. But you have to be really, really close to him. Like I, let, let me accelerate a little bit right here. And now we are basically sitting behind him like this. And as you can see, it's still not picking it. It's still not picking it up. That's that's how bad the HDN modes are, because, well, they're HDN modes. Head-on, right? It's head-on. It's head so, yeah. 
And now we are within minimal range anyway, and that would not be successful. <laughs> so your best bet, it doesn't matter which missiles you're actually using, but your best bet is to use the strength of the F-14, and that is to pick up enemies and fire at enemies way before they can fire at you. Now in RB that might be a bit difficult because it's a constant civil war where America fights America, Britain fights Britain, USSR fights USSR and all that nonsense. However, in SIM you have actual teams like the US fighting USSR and stuff like that. So depending on what you're facing, um, you will outrange the enemy. At this time of filming, it's mostly F-14s versus F-14s. But when the hype dies down, this will change. Now here's a guy that's, I think he's about to go head on. Um, you can change the radar scale and range with other buttons. Please look them up in the options. It might be different for you, which options or which keys it actually is. So I will switch the missile now to the Phoenix, which is your main weapon. It also is, of course, a Fakur 90, but uh, it's the same way. So basically, it's uh, it, it acts the same way, right? It's just a different kind of missile. This is an active homing missile. So what this does is you can fire it at enemies, and when they are in the range of the seeker, the seeker will go active and will not rely on your aircraft radar to be guided anymore. That means you guide it in via TWS mode and then when the missile is about 10 miles away from the target, it will take over itself. Remember this is a TWS HDN mode, which means only head-ons will reliably work. As we can see here, the guy is still not on radar. <laughs> right? It's still not on radar. So if you want to have a lock on an enemy with a pursuit situation, you have to be in SRC mode like this. And now he's locked. Right? And this is the only way it's working. Now, the only problem with SRC mode is that it is very, very prone to chaffing. Chef is basically a method of confusing an enemy's radar by pumping out little aluminum foil out the back of the plane. And then the, the radar gets confused and it tries to lock onto everything at once and it's getting confused and loses the lock eventually. This only is effective for SRC in general. Um, so. When you are in that mode, yes, you can lock targets in a pursuit situation, but one press of a button like this, and the enemy's radar is confused. Take that into account when A, attacking enemies, but take it also into account when you are in the defensive. So when you have an F-14 behind you, and he has fired a radar missile at you, which is not active, so a classic AIM-7, for example, then a press to the chef button, like so, is very likely to confuse the enemy's radar. All right? So next demonstration will be the AIM-54 Phoenix. For that, we will switch to TWS mode and get one of these bogus targets right there in a head-on situation. There he is. I will prime the missile and fire. And to demonstrate, because we are already in, in rain, I will turn the radar off completely now. In my plane and the missile's radar took over and will hit the target. Now, again, this only works head-on, all right? So don't be confused when you are 
flying behind a target and it's not picking it up. That is also true for the ACM mode. So you can enable ACM mode and you get a little, in RB you get a little like green box on the screen which is blinking all the time. And when you're trying to lock some target like this, flying behind it, it still won't work. And as you can see here, for example, um, this guy right there is not coming head on to us. He's kind of flying away from us and hence it's still not working. Now what you can do is go to SRC mode and lock him manually like this. But again, <laughs> one press of a chef button will negate that lock. This is a bot, obviously he is not chaffing, but if there was an enemy and if he would pump chef, that would not work. So what do we get from this? The Phoenix is very, very good in head-on situations, but in nothing else. That is also true for the Fakura 90, right? The advantage of the TWS mode is that in contrast to normal radar locks, for example, the SRC lock that I just demonstrated, in contrast to these modes, the TWS soft lock, when the box appears around an enemy um, on your radar screen, does not alert the enemy's RWR. Normally, when you're getting locked via an enemy radar or from an enemy radar, you will hear a beeping tone that differs from plane to plane. Sometimes it's a solid beep. Sometimes when you are in a more advanced plane, it would be when you're getting fired upon a sound like beep, beep, beep. Okay. Um, the TWS soft lock will not alert the enemy. This is just your computer in the plane soft locking a target. It is not actually physically sending out more radiation. And that is why an enemy RWR will not get triggered. That is a big, big advantage of this. Now, you can, in theory, launch the Phoenix in all radar modes. For example, in SRC mode as well. It, it is possible. So let me demonstrate this. This is SRC mode. The enemy is not chaffing which means we will have an easy lock on this guy. There he is. Prime, fire. And the phoenix is away. Poof. Okay. Now, uh, you might see a little bit of disturbance in the radar window, like green clutter. This is because this is a classic radar mode. It does not filter out the ground at all. There is no mass being applied. There is no fancy computer involved. This is just the radar return that it sees. It's a reflected uh, radiation off the ground. Okay. Basically, this sees everything. Um, but is yeah because it sees everything, it's so prone to countermeasures, right? Now this mode right here, SRC PD HDN, is basically like TWS. It filters out the ground. As you can see, there's no green nonsense on the screen. But it has one disadvantage, and that is that it only can see and track, see not, but track one target at a time. So you can lock one target, and it will stay locked until you unlock it or until it's destroyed. With TWS, you can fire your phoenixes at, I think it was four or six targets at once, and it will guide all of the fired missiles to the target at once, because it has multiple data channels. That is not possible with SRC PD head-on. Now there's one last mode that is rarely being talked about, and which is kind of a mix between SRC and classic post Doppler. It is still head on, so hence the HDN ending. But what this does is 
It does not filter out the ground clutter, as you can see. There is still ground clutter there. But it will tr still track targets through it. So the big disadvantage of that mode is it does not have IFF, okay? So this mode, I think I actually have to restart the test setup right here to tell you how targets look like. Okay, so we are back in the test screen with new target drones. Um, PDV HDN, it, that stands for Pulse Doppler Velocity Head-On. Now, I will turn into a target right here. There he is. And you can see he is appearing on the radar right there. Um, but in contrast to other modes, you could see that when he was approaching us, this was not reflected on the radar screen in terms of it getting closer to the bottom. <laughs> now you might ask, what the hell is going on here? Why is it not displaying the range? Well, that's because of how this mode works. A, there's no IFF here, as I said. B, so you can't see who's enemy and who's friendly on the radar. It's all displayed as an enemy. You have to basically make up your mind of is this is an enemy or not. The second information you get with this is as follows. The closer the enemy is to the bottom, or let's start the other way actually, forget that. The higher the enemy is on the radar screen, so the more to the top he is, the faster he is approaching you. The closer he is to the bottom of this ground crutter line down there, the slower he is approaching you, okay? And if he is below that line, he is flying away from you. So I think what's happening right now is that because he's flying away from us, he's not appearing at all. He's just stuck in that ground clutter line right there. So this does not measure the distance to target, this mode. It measures if the enemy is coming towards you or flying away from you. So if the enemy speed would change from, let's say, 400 kilometers an hour to 800 kilometers an hour, the line on the radar, I can't simulate this, this with bots, obviously, but the line on the radar would switch its place from being closer to the bottom, higher to the top. Now there's another target up there to demonstrate. Let's get closer to him. And there he is. Right there. Now let's see if the a radar can see him. There he is right there. So he's appearing kind of at the bottom, right? That means he is coming towards us, but really slowly. Now if we lock this, you can see and confirm that yes, he is coming towards us, but not really fast, right? If he was faster, unlock him, the line would appear way more at the top, like in the in the upper third right there. I hope I made that clear enough. <laughs> so these are the radar modes of the F-14. Um, in conclusion, the SRC PDV head-on mode, realistically, you will not really use in battle because you have everything else, right? Um, SRC Use it in pursuit situations uh, and hope that the enemy doesn't chaff. Um, but it is really unlikely. But it is the only mode that you can use when you are in pursuit, realistically. SRC PD head-on to fire classic non-active radar missiles. For example, the AIM-7E2 or the AIM-7F if you are in the classic tech tree version of the F-14. And TWS head-on as the main mode for the AM-54 and for the Fakura 90. But 
this is only head-on. Just to reiterate this. See, the guy is right there, and now we are in the minimum firing range, so the radar lock is gone. So he appeared for a short time, but as you could see on the right side, on the radar screen, the dash appeared only when he was already below the uh, 75 degree line, so basically outside the actual radar box, and this is the minimum range for firing, and then you can't fire anymore. I hope this was somewhat um, informative. Um, I, I really just do this because I assume that the F-14 is <laughs> very popular. Um, and I've, from my quick sessions in game, I confirmed that. So everybody's flying it at the moment. And I hope that um, it's it, this prevents a couple of team kills, right? This is true for Sim, but also for RB. Um, I was playing here in the cockpit perspective because I am a Sim player. Um, but how the radar works is the same across all the modes in War Thunder. So, yeah, I hope you got a couple of information from that. Oh, one last thing uh, about the... Maybe you're asking yourself... Um, what's the range of the M54 Phoenix Active Seeker is. It's a, as I said, it's about 10 miles-ish. So you have to keep the TWS soft lock on the target until the line of the missile approaches the target. I think I have to demonstrate that. Okay, we are in a head-to-head -head combat situation now. And I will enable the radar and switch to the M54s. And there we have enemy targets. Now, that should be a head-on situation. And there is something. He is about 60 kilometers away. And I will now demonstrate what happens when you fire an M54 long range. As you can see, let's pause that for a second. On the right side in the radar screen, you see a different symbology compared to what we saw earlier because he's so far away. On the right side of the box, you have three lines. The, a shorter top line a longer middle line and just at the bottom a very short line again. If the long line is between the short lines, you are within theoretical weapon range. That means that if the enemy is continuing on that very course at that very speed, the missile will hit. Now let's switch to the middle of the image of the radar box and then focus on the line that goes towards the locked target. You see a dashed line, and then it converts to a solid line. When the solid line has reached the target, that means the missile has gone active, uses its own seeker, and you do not have to guide it anymore. Okay? You can fire the 54 Phoenix and the Fakur and immediately break lock and the missile will try to intercept the target based on its last heading. But if the enemy changes the heading only slightly, it will lose the lock or track rather. So it is best practice to keep the missile guided on its course until the solid line has reached the target and there is no more dashed line visible. I will unpause this now. And there we go, it is lofting. All right, it is lofting high to maximize the range. I'm still guiding the missile and you can see that the dashed line 
is getting shorter and shorter as the missile goes towards the target. And when the dashed line is fully consumed, I will disable the radar to demonstrate how the missile guides itself. So now the missile has gone fully active on its own and I will disable the radar. Wait a couple of seconds, that was a long distance shot. Yep, and if you're thinking, wow, that took a sweet time, you're actually right. <laughs> this missile has been invented to strike bombers, large targets over large distances. It has not been invented to strike fighters. Obviously you can, and you will, because it's the main weapon of the F-14, but it is not made to do that. Now, any normal enemy, if it wasn't a bot in a prop, would have evaded the missile by now. And if you saw and observed the radar screen, you saw that I fired at around 60 or 70 kilometers of range, right? This is not best practice. In War Thunder, in the game, I would fire between 40 and 20 kilometers. That is, on my, in my experience, the best practical range to target enemy fighters. Now let's try that again. That is really within range. It's almost minimum range. I don't actually know what I have locked because it's an automatic thing. Okay. It shows that one. Okay. And it got confused there for a second because it's uh, <laughs> because it's many targets flying in a very small area. You can change, by the way, the target you want to lock or soft lock. It's called bugging, by the way, in a professional speech. You can change the locked target with your cycle targets key. Uh, that is in the controls panel. And let me see if I can find it quickly. It should be under weaponry. On my keyboard, I have set it to be the P5. It's it's called select radar slash IRST target to lock. That cycles the targets on your radar screen. I hope that was uh, informative and um, gives you a little bit of a head start when you're using the F14. And I will uh, continue to grind the Fakurs now. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that and until the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>